Hello everyone and welcome back. So we have successfully installed Git and created our first repository. Now it's time for the absolute core of using Git, which is understanding the fundamental workflow. Now this is where you will learn how to track your changes, save them permanently and then review your project's history. Get ready, this is where Git truly comes alive. Now before we dive into the commands, it's crucial to understand uh, Git's uh, three core states where your files can reside. Think of them as different areas or layers within your Git managed project. So the first state we have is the working directory. Now this is where you will be actively working on your files. This is the folder you see and interact with on your computer. So when you open a file or uh, type anything, you are doing it in the working directory. From there, you go to the staging area. Now this is the middle ground, a uh, holding area or a pre-commit buffer. Now this is where you prepare a snapshot of your changes before you permanently save them. You choose which changes you want to include in your next save point. And then you have the git repository which is your dot git directory now this is where git stores your project's complete history including all the permanent snapshots which is basically your commits that you have made once changes are here they are safely recorded so your workflow will always involve moving changes through these three different states so you make the changes in the working area you move it to the staging area and then you commit it in your git repository now let's talk about the very first command in git which is your git status command so we can use this to uh, check the status of your files so the very first command that you will constantly use in git is this particular command so this is your git gps it tells you the current state of your working directory and staging area showing you what changes are pending so if you want to know whether your data is in the working area or in the staging area, we can make use of your git status command. So let's open up our project that we created in the last session. So here is the uh, directory that we created in the last session. And right now this is empty except the uh, hidden dot git folder. So here if I run this command git status command, so it tells me that no commits yet and nothing to commit uh, basically you know it is telling um, we don't have anything to commit this means there are no changes in our working directory and nothing is waiting in the staging area now that's perfect next we'll talk about your git add command so this is what you can use to stage your changes for the commit so let's say we will create a file and then we will run the git status command again. So I'll create a simple file called index.html file in our project. So we can use this command touch index.html and this will create a file for us. Now if I run the git, run the git status command again, now git says, hey, there's a new file called uh, index.html file, but I am not tracking it. These are untracked files. Basically, Git sees them but isn't watching them. Let's add some context to this file. So let's go to the file and let's say h1. This is the first header. And then let's say h1. This is the second header. You can add whatever you want. Let's save this file. And now, if I run the git status command again, it tells us that this is an untracked file, right? And nothing added to the commit, but untracked files are present. So basically it is telling me like, you know, you have made some changes, but this is not added to the commit and git is not tracking this. So to move these changes from the working directory to the staging area, we make use of the git add command. So we'll say git add and then the file name. And now let's look at the git status command 
once again. Great. So index.html file is now in the staging area. Git sees it as changes to be committed. So it's basically ready for our next save point. So basically also red color basically indicates it's in working area and the green color basically indicates that's your staging area. And also you can see this is untracked files and here it says changes to be committed. So if you see changes to be committed, that means your files are in the um, uh, staging area. Now here we have used this um, git add command git add and then the file name. Now what if you have many new files or many modified files. So instead of adding them one by one, you can stage all the changes from your current directory and its subdirectories by using this git add dot. So basically I'm telling I want to uh, stage all the files that are there in my working area to the staging area. So now git status will show you all your new and modified files um, in the staging area ready to be committed. So this is extremely convenient for staging everything you have worked on. So if you don't want to stage one file at a time, you can simply use this. This is like a wild card. So it will basically uh, move all of your files from the working area to the staging area. Next, we'll talk about your git commit command. So this is what we can use to save your changes in your repository. So once your changes are in the staging area, so let me clear this and let me run the git status once again. So now my data is in the staging area. So that means you are ready to make your commit. Now, what is a commit? A commit is a permanent snapshot of your project at a specific point in time. So here, this is a specific point in time. It's like pressing save on your time machine. Now to commit your changes, we make use of this git commit command along with the commit message. Now commit message is crucial because this describes what changes uh, you made and why the change was done. Now imagine this, you as a developer, you might be knowing as to what, what, what change you're doing and why you're making this change. But when others are looking at it, they may not understand why this change was done. Or maybe after a month, you may not remember why this change was done. So that's where commit message can be really useful. So for that, we can use this hyphen M flag and then your um, uh, commit message. So let's call this as initial commit. Um, let's say add basic HTML code. In You can give whatever you want. And then you hit enter and this will commit your changes in the repository. So the output gives you some uh, important information. So you have your branch, which is the master um, and then your root commit and then the commit ID. Now this indicates the branch and that this is your first commit and then you have the commit ID, which is a short version of the commits unique id which is a checksum then you have the number of files changed so summarizes the changes included so you have one file change two insertions now if you run the git status command once again your working directory and staging area are both clean all your changes are now safely stored in the git repository as a permanent commit now tips for good commit message always try to be concise so the first uh, line like let's say 50 to 72 characters give a summary of the change of the imperative mode like you know you're adding something or fixing something or you're doing a refactor all right so this one then you can give a blank line which is to separate the subject from the body and then give a detailed body it's optional generally we don't do that this is this is what we do but you have the option of giving a detailed description as well. Now, please remember, good commit messages very, are very vital for understanding your project's history and for team collaboration. So basically, you use the git status command to check the status of your files to in which area your files are in. To move the files, you make use of the git add command and to save your changes, we make use of the git commit command. Now let's talk about the git log command which can be used to view your project's history. So now we have made a commit, but how do you see this commit? So that's where we make use of the git log command. 
it shows you the recorded history of your project so running this git log command will show you your commits in the reverse chronological order so you'll have at the top you'll always have the newest commits so each entry includes um, commit id that's a unique identifier for this particular snapshot then it will have the author as to basically uh, the name and email address configured with basically you and then you'll have the date when this commit was done and then you will have the commit message uh, basically you know the description of the changes now there are a lot of options that you can use with this git log command one such option is using this git log hyphen hyphen one line now this gives you a much more compact single line summary of each commit showing just the short commit id uh, and the first line of the commit message this can be great for a quick view then you have git log hyphen hyphen graph now this option adds an ascii art graph to the left of the commit message all right so to the left of the commit message uh, this can help you visualize the history of your merges and branches right now with only one commit it looks very simple but it becomes incredibly powerful when you start branching then we can use this git log hyphen hyphen one line hyphen hyphen graph so you can combine one line and graph as well so this gives you a concise visual representation of your history so you have just performed the core git workflow so you work in the working directory you decide what changes uh, to save by moving them to the staging area with the git add command and then you permanently record those staged changes in your git repository with the git commit command along with a descriptive message and you review your progress with git status and git log command now this cycle of modify add and uh, commit is something that you will repeat hundreds if not thousands of times in your development career in the next video we are going to explore how to undo mistakes because they happen to everyone we will look at git restore and git reset for getting out of tricky situations if you found this breakdown helpful please hit that like button subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what your first comment message will be thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video